Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. This is another Station Rigs. We are in Eppington, Virginia, and then we're working with Lieutenant Josh. Thank you for taking us around. What are we in right now? So this is our rescue. This is Rescue 17. Okay. And what is it specifically? So this is a 2016 Pierce Saber. Uh, we got it specially built for our department. Uh, I received it in about 2017, oh. put it in service. Dude, this ride's really, really nice. There's yeah. a lot of cool features to this truck. Oh, How yeah. about we uh, just take a look and uh, bring it back to the station and see what you got inside. All right. So, let's do a walk around now. All right. Let me come around to you. Let's start on your side. So I guess we'll start back here. Okay. Back to the cab. So, of course, we got our air pack seats here. We got MSA G1s on all of our rigs. This is also an EMS vehicle. So, back here in these back cabinets, we got different EMS supplies, our suction, AD, our first in EMS bag stuff like that right right it's nice that the fire trucks also are our first first responder kind of truck too. yeah especially with this being a rescue going to like motor vehicle accidents being able to provide that patient care right while we're right there like it just helps out so much more in terms of patient outcomes being able to provide that level of care right i noticed right off the bat you actually have a gopro already hooked up and ready oh, yeah. to go yeah we uh we use that we do an end of the year video kind of recap so being able to have that, get footage of us going to different types of calls and stuff like that, it's something really nice that we just started doing. So where could viewers see that? Yeah, so we upload them on YouTube. If you just look up Evington Volunteer Fire Department, it will show up there. All um, right. We got our year in video from last year on there. So just feel free to check it out. I'll be doing that tonight when I'm hanging out here. All so. right. All right. And back here's the pump panel. Yep, we got our pump panel. So this truck carries, it's got a 1250 pump, a thousand gallons of water. We've got our two cross lays. We just got flat loads here. We got multiple different discharges on this side. We got one on the other side as well. And then our steamer intake or two and a half intake and yep. stuff like that. Okay. Even though this is a newer truck, you have the traditional pull levers too. Yeah. Sometimes I appreciate that. I've, I've noticed a lot of them going to the digital kind mm -hmm. of things. I like the feeling of pulling that lever, know it's engaged and I'm getting the water to the right hose. Like I've always been told, water and electricity don't mix. <laughs> so <laughs> right. you know, there's too many things that can go wrong with just having the electrical valves and stuff like that like i can see it having for a couple of intakes on the other side or on the rear but having all of your discharges and things like that electrical i can just see too many things going wrong with them i'd rather have the traditional right right all right next cabinet we yeah. have so in here it's kind of our main engineer's cabinet so we got flares a remote for our light tower okay a short section of uh five inch hose two and a half some forestry hose and a nozzle Nice big toolbox in here. We keep different like rescue supplies, rescue tools, like a pneumatic okay. impact. I like that you actually have air to that too. Many of the companies mm -hmm. are switching over to the battery powered stuff. Then you have to have enough generator power mm -hmm. to keep all that done, but having that air compressor on makes it real nice and easy. Yeah, too. so we got that. And then we, we also do have battery powered tools here. So we've got a whole Milwaukee kit with just different like small impact uh, drills, angle grinders, different things like that. Um, in here we got various hand tools, so like sawzall blades that we can use to help cut vehicles, things like that in terms of extrication. Okay. Different like adjustable wrenches. This is actually a combination tool. You can use this for multiple different things. It's got like wire cutters on here, a little uh, wrench for like shutting off gas at a house and things like that. Right, right. And a little window punch here. If you yeah, that's one well. of the old specialty tools that I've mm -hmm. seen back in the old days that, you know, you don't see too often anymore. Yeah, but it's something that's nice to have because, you know, if you're trying to secure utilities on a house, on a house fire or something like that, you know, you can just come over here, grab this, and you should have ideally everything you need. Right. And what's the whole purpose of having a toolbox like this? This is a fire truck. Why mm -hmm. do you have a toolbox on it? So a lot of it comes with like technical rescue stuff. Um, so in terms of like farm extrication, if some, like, let's say a farmer got their arm stuck in a baler or something like that, a lot of that is just taking the equipment apart because you can't just cut it. It's too big, too thick, too heavy metal. 
So a lot of it is you have to just slowly take it apart to be able to get that person out, get their arm out, get them free and get them to the hospital. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, and, and I then... bet, let's see, in one of these compartments, oh, here it is. Bet you've never seen a beach ball in here before. No. So the, the point of this actually, if we're doing a drafting operation with hard suction, uh, draft into the fire truck, what you'll see is there's a little swirl of air that comes on. Yeah. So you inflate this, it stops that air so you don't lose your draft. Okay, okay. So that's why we have this in here. We have it in our engine as well. Right, right. So that's pretty much the gist of this. Just generalized, like a little bit of cribbing here for stabilization, yep. just other different tools that we may need. So Next. in here, this is our main like fire tool compartment. So we've got our pickhead axe, halligan bar, short pike pole here. Yeah. Um, this is actually called a foo bar. Okay. It's pretty similar to a halligan bar. It's just different little angles and stuff cut in there. Right, right. And your glass master, yep. the old traditional glass. Yep. The fact that you still got your punch in there, mm -hmm. it hasn't been lost yet. We got that in there. It really comes <laughs> in handy. And then over here on the other side, we got different tools, a little pry bar, eight pound sledgehammer, flathead axe and a, another shorter foo bar. Right, right. In here, we've actually got high dry that helps like clean up fluids in a motor vehicle accident. Sure. This is our little uh, chimney container. So if there's like a uh, chimney fire or something, we've got different stuff in here, like chains and stuff that right. we can use to drop you, down. Yep. Chimney bombs or chimney nozzles to help put it out. Okay. We got a battery powered leaf blower back here and some different shovels. Okay, why would you need a battery powered leaf blower? So in terms of using that, it's just quicker to use instead of trying to pull start a leaf blower. We can use it on multiple different things okay. like getting debris out of the roadway. It's smaller, it's lighter. So um, you're not doing yard work with it. No. You're actually cleaning up the scene. Yeah, so we're cleaning up the scene, cleaning up like, you know, any debris that may be there after a motor vehicle accident, glass, plastic, anything that may come off of a car, we're able to blow it into a pile, scoop it up with a shovel, okay. and get it disposed of to get the road cleaned up. Yeah, and then you don't necessarily have to use so many brooms that, mm -hmm. you know, back we, that's all we used to use in the yeah. day. <laughs> I mean, we still have brooms on here, sure. but a lot of times that just works better. Yeah, and quicker. Oh yeah, this is kind of our, one of our rescue compartments. Okay. So we've got our step cribbing here, multiple different cribbing. I mean, cribbing is really similar to Legos for the most part. It's just fire department Legos. You just stack them up to stabilize the vehicle. Right. Our air controls for if we want to use that pneumatic air gun or any other air tools. Okay. We've got these airbags here yep. that will help uh, jack up, lift up a car off the ground. Our two uh, air bottles here that we use for that, and it's got the regulator here on the side. Okay. We've got an air chisel in here um, that we can use to kind of help take things apart as well. Yeah, yeah. And then it looks like you got your pressure uh, fan. Yep, our pressure fan. So this is battery powered as well. Okay. You just put a battery in here and it will blow uh, air into the house for as long as I've seen it last on one battery is a little over an hour. Wow, okay. Yeah, in here we got our other smaller airbags. Working our way around to the back. Yep. So back Love here. the fact that you got the flag hanging off the back. Oh, That's yeah. always a good touch. So back here in the back, this is all of our extrication supplies. So we got our TNT hydraulic pump. This actually slides out. So right here, are spreaders or jaws of life, um, our cutters here, and this is a hydraulic ram. Right. That is the bread and butter of most rescues. Yep. So those are the things that are going to do a lot of the heavy lifting. Oh yeah. Or a lot of heavy cutting. You know, we can use the hand tools. We mm -hmm. can, you know, cut things apart with an air chisel. I've done it. Or a sawzall. I can cut a car apart, but it takes a while. We're using these kind of tools. Yep. You can get in get quick. quickly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah different hydraulic hose, gloves, and eye protection here as well. Right. Up there in this compartment above you, if I can reach it. So uh, back in there, we've got a Stokes basket. Yep. Some backboards and just some other like extrication supplies we may use. Okay. So in here, we've got- Now there's the brush. Yep. yep. We've got our uh, 10 foot roof ladder. Okay. A 24 foot extension ladder right here. Yeah. 10 foot attic ladder and two six foot pike poles. Yep, again, those are the essentials. Those yeah. are the things that, you know, are really gonna go to work that you're gonna use a, quite a bit off of an engine. Oh yeah, so up here is just one section of hard uh, suction. Hard suction, yeah. okay. Can't and really. What are you laying up top for main? What do you guys got? You got yeah. five, in it, five inch? Yeah. yeah, so we got 500 foot of five inch and then another 500 of three inch. Okay. And then we've got our 200 foot, two and a half pre-connect in the back. Okay, so that, that you'd use for maybe a blitz line or something mm -hmm. like that? Blitz line, large defensive fire, stuff like that. Yep. So in here, we've got some more rescue supplies. 
So, this looks more like the forestry stuff. That we, yeah, more forestry stuff. And then in this box, we got even more cribbing. Like you can never have enough cribbing on these trucks. All right, because every vehicle is a little different. Yep. If you saw my truck, the Heroes Next Door truck, you know, I got an eight and a half inch lift with 37 inch tires. You know, most of that cribbing is going to be needed just to get to my frame. So. Yep. Most of that's going to be needed, um, <laughs> especially on like large semi trucks too. You know, we got a lot of semi trucks coming through our area. So in terms of wrecks with them, we need a lot of this cribbing. Okay. I noticed that you have an electric saw and a yep. gas saw. Why is that? So the gas saw, we'll mainly use this more for forestry reasons. This electric saw, it works really, really good on roofs. Because really? Because you don't have to worry about it being choked out by the smoke. It's, it's a whole lot lighter. It's easier to turn on, easier to just run. You don't have to worry about it just running the entire time you're bringing it up. You just put the battery in, you click the safety off, and you just go to work. Okay. Then we got our K12 saw here as well. Yep. Different light chainsaw tools like our right. chainsaw fuel, bar oil, and chaps. Uh, chaps, yeah. That's the other thing that I've noticed. Some of the fire trucks don't have the chaps. You know, they're used to, I got my fire gear on, I'm going to the roof. The fact that you guys, you know, do some forestry and stuff like that, having chaps is important. Yeah. I've had saws kick back and almost get me too. So there's studies that show that uh, the uh, fire gear won't stop the saw. Um, it will just go right through it. I've seen videos online where it will cut straight through a piece of wood. Right. Where these chaps bind up in the blade, blade and actually stop it. Right, right. In here we got a little rope bag in terms of rescue. Okay. And then we've also got our water can. Yep. And our ABC fire extinguisher. Okay. So right here. So these are our rescue jacks. Okay. These are really good for vehicle stabilization. You're just able to take them, jack them all the way up. You got chains here to help stabilize them together in terms of like... So they're not just struts. Those yeah. are actually jacks too. Yep. They will actually lift the vehicle up. If a vehicle is on its side, you right. can stabilize it with them. Yeah. But you can turn this knob here and you can lift the vehicle up however much you need to stabilize it. Okay, that's a good way to um, do that. A lot of the trucks that we've seen, especially the rescue trucks, usually just have you know the Paratech struts that yeah. you're gonna you're gonna stabilize the vehicle with that, but you can't really jack with that. Yeah, we actually have some on the top of this truck as well. Okay. So we got rescue jacks here and then the Paratech struts on the top. Okay. Here's work around. This is the yep. other side. So you got a cross lay that can come off either side. Yep. Okay. It comes off either side. Um same thing so this is a 150 foot this is just a hundred foot we've got our passenger discharge our large diameter discharge and our steamer connection here okay so that's all we have on here so the question i have is you know for the viewers is where i come from in pennsylvania we don't necessarily have to have a cdl to drive these things mm -hmm. in virginia do you need a cdl to drive no you just need to have your evoc or your emergency vehicle operations okay okay so those people that are out there watching the video that are in this area and they maybe want to come take a closer look at the truck or get a hold of you mm -hmm. and maybe come volunteer how would they do that yeah so you know you can always get in contact with us on the campbell county website um, if you look up Evington Volunteer Fire Department, there should be a link with the Campbell County uh, government website. It should give you all the contact information and email to reach out to us. It has our phone number on there. And then we also have our uh, meetings the second, third, and fourth Monday night of the month. You know, more than welcome to come down, say hi, okay. look at the trucks, anything like that. So your meetings, do you also do training on those nights? Yes. So okay. we do trainings on the second Monday night. Okay. And then we do like a rig check third and then our business meeting on the fourth. Okay. So as I was driving around, I noticed you got a couple pieces of equipment in the captain's chair where mm -hmm. I was riding. Can you talk us through some of that equipment you have? Yeah. So you'll see in here, we've got our thermal imaging camera here, a couple of stuffed animals like for kids and stuff like that involved in like motor vehicle accidents help calm down. Okay. Um, this is another remote that we use for our light tower. So it's wireless. We're able to put the light tower up, point it to wherever we need, especially at night, it comes really in handy. Right. We've got our CAD system there on that iPad and our gas monitor over there in the middle. Yeah, those are all the important things that you, you can have at a moment's notice. Yep. That you're gonna get out of the truck, if you need to do that search or mm -hmm. something like that, it's good to have those right here up front. Yep, exactly. You know, the one thing that I noticed when we were driving around that this truck rides pretty smooth. Is it hard to drive? Especially in this area, it can be a little bit hard to drive, especially with how narrow the roads are and how wide this truck is. It takes up almost the entire lane. So that's something that can be pretty difficult about driving these. After a while of driving them, you get used to it. You know you kind of have to ride the middle line almost. Okay, so. okay. Do you got anything up front? Yeah, so up front. So we have our trash line 
that we're able to just pull off. We use it mainly for vehicle fires. So we have this in what's called a double donut configuration. Okay. So the double donut roll just pretty much take the uh, section of hose and just roll it side by side almost. So what you're able to do to pull this, just grab the nozzle, grab right here and pull it away from the truck, flakes it out by itself and everything. It is super easy. Nice. We've got an extra 50 foot section of inch and a half line here and then our two and a half right here behind it. Okay, all right. Dude, this is an amazing truck. You know, thank you for setting it up the way you did. It seems pretty easy to operate. And yeah. It has every tool that you need to do vehicle extrication or firefighting. Yeah. So Josh, thank you so much for bringing us around. This was another episode of Station Rigs with the Abington Fire Department, company number 17. Uh, before we end, do us a favor, hit that subscribe if you haven't done it. Smash those likes, make some comments below. What do you think of this engine? Also, we do have that members page, so make sure you hit that join button and see some of the behind the scenes footage as we've been 24 hours here. Mike is getting his thumbnails. Got her.